here's how the Dallas Mavericks are embarrassing the Utah Jazz. Jalen Brunson's not only stepped up, but his 36 field goals are the most made baskets of any player in 2022's playoffs. Spencer Dinwiddie welcomed Rudy Gobert to his Kodak moment with a vicious poster, while stretch bigs Maxi Kleba and Dorian Finney-Smith combined to be a plus 22, while giving Jason Kidd an extra 31 points. This video breaks down the keys for the Mavs' dominance even without Luka Doncic so far in their series against the Spida-led team from Utah. Right before that, just 10% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at DeepFlowHoops, and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. The final quarter of Game 3 in Salt Lake City saw Luka's supporting cast display their built-for-playoff basketball with or without him. During the fourth, Dallas didn't draw up a single play set, instead choosing to pinpoint Utah's weakest defensive link and attack in isolations. The game plan for beating this Mitchell Gobert-led Jazz team has become way too evident. You just need five players capable of spacing out the defense with a three-pointer, and it causes nightmares for Quinn Snyder's unit. On any given possession, Dallas has two bodies spotted up in the corner, two setting screens for mismatches, and one player attacking in an isolation. It's extremely simple offense, but the way in which Jalen Brunson can find space for himself and his teammates has been nothing less than deadly for Utah to deal with. Either off drive and kicks, speedy attacks to the bucket, or incredibly crafty shot creations off the dribble, the Villanova alum has served as the perfect replacement for Luka Doncic, as Brunson's averaged a Slovenian sensation-esque 32 points, 5 boards, and 5 dimes on 51-31-85 shooting splits over the first three games of 2022's playoffs. Attacking Utah's best player, Donovan Mitchell, according to StatMuse, Maverick players have shot 11% better when guarded by the Spida. After Jalen steps back, faking like he's going to reset the offense and dish it off, this simple momentum crossover is enough to get right past Bogdanovich, and this quote-unquote rim protection from Gobert just isn't going to cut it. The Stifle Tower has to react quicker. That layup squares the attention of every Jazz defender on Brunson's drive to the basket, as a few minutes later, watch how this dribble penetration gets the Jazz defense scrambling, and this is supposed to be Gobert's man to pick up. After Brunson kicks it out to Josh Green with a bullet pass to the top of the arc, Gobert could have made an effort here, but instead chooses to barely contest the shot and stay inside for the rebound. Before those possessions, there were two nasty isos to kick off the game from Jalen. First, he bails out Dinwiddie. He finds Brunson at the back end of the shot clock. Jalen pump fakes twice after catching the pass to get his matchup slightly out of position, dribbling over to the weak side before pump faking yet again, sweeping through to fake a layup, and fading away like he's Dirk. Those are naturally gifted shot-creating instincts, as Brunson has such a pristine wherewithal to sense how much space he's got between he and his defender. Next, a quick pick and pop from Reggie Bullock gets Jalen the switch onto Mitchell. A few hesitations leading into a crossover to his right, slight step back, and just when Donovan thinks he's got him under control, a fluid spin move over to his left gets Jalen all the space he needs. Lastly, the former Wildcats ability to blow past opponents without needing a screen, combined with his finishing at the bucket, has also shocked me in these first three games of round one. Envisioning this version of Brunson becoming the team's second score once again after Luka returns is a scary picture for top contenders, one they must watch out for. Hardcore NBA followers knew Jalen was having a breakout regular season, but what he's done so far in the playoffs has been undoubtedly the NBA's most shocking storyline. Over Dallas's last two games, Brunson has 72 points, only putting him next to Michael Jordan, Karl Malone, Michael Redd, LeBron James, and Jamal Murray as one of six players ever since 1978 to score at least 72 points while committing zero or one turnovers over a two-game playoff span. Speaking of shocking, Maxi Kleba's shooting stroke didn't just carry over into the Game 3 win over Utah, it was contagious to his teammates. Green and Bertan seemed to vibe off Kleba showing and use their time on the court to help tear apart Utah's defense in the first half. Together, the bench trio of Maxi, Josh Green, and Davis Bertans shot 11 of 17 from three, 
which gave the Mavericks a big enough cushion to absorb the second half push from the Jazz. It's mind-boggling that those three players, who've struggled a ton as of late, saw their jumpers fall one after the other in Game 3. Throughout his five-year NBA career, you could always count on Kleba to knock down his open threes. Specifically last season, the German shot a career-high 41% on 4.2 triples per game. However, that proven deep-range capability is what made this season slump for Maxi so inexplicable. His 32.5 season average doesn't even fully capture how Kleba's shot has just sank. It completely abandoned him. Kleba entered the postseason shooting an unacceptable 18.8% from three since the All-Star break. He made only nine threes in the entire month of March. From that point of view, Maxi's two for five night from deep range in game one was already nothing less than a miracle. Still, no one could have predicted what he'd come out and do in game two. His eight for 11 night is the stuff of legends and Maxi followed up that 25-point Game 2 performance with another stellar showing in Game 3. He scored 17 points while hitting four of his five three-pointers, converting six of seven from the field overall. Meanwhile, the Big D's most important role player, Dorian Finney-Smith, should receive a ton of credit for his heart and fitness. The man played a game-high 47 minutes and was also a game-high plus 12. DFS had a massive defensive workload, chipping in 12 points, 8 rebounds, 2 dimes, and 4 steals. He made an incredibly clutch 3 with 156 left to push the Mavs lead back to 10 points. That shot won't show up on NBA.com's clutch database given the game wasn't within 5 points, but it nonetheless was a stone cold dagger from Dodo. Sophomore Josh Green had a bounce back performance, converting 3 of his 5 triples while being a difference maker with his energy and shot making. Considering the environment, this was the best game of Green's young career. Former San Antonio Spurs and Washington Wizards stretch big Davis Bertans also answered the call with 15 points on 4 for 7 three-point shooting. Davis has proved to be an excellent trade deadline acquisition. As you saw in the intro, Spencer Dinwiddie threw down this nasty poster directly in the face of a three-time Defensive Player of the Year in Gobert, while Dinwiddie's 20 points came on just 6 for 21 shooting from the field. His aggressiveness opened up seams in Utah's defense, and he made up for his lack of efficiency by dropping six dimes and snatching three steals on the other end. What's impressed you the most about Dallas without Luka? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. Top five commenters by June 21st receive free NBA merchandise this summer, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Caleb Hobbs, who says the reason Boston and Brooklyn is such a good series is because of the storylines that go with it. Two champion veterans against two young players hungry for a deep playoff run. Kyrie versus Boston is also an amazing storyline. Appreciate every answer. I hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.